I'm Bill Boudreau, um, coming to you from my house in Galveston, Texas, and more specifically from my dining room table, which seems to be the new norm these days. And I just wanted to give you a little bit about my background. This year, I'll be, I will be in RN for 45 years. It's amazing that I'm only 49. Uh, I spent uh, 10 years in the ER ICU setting, 20 years teaching nursing, and my last seven years I spent teaching in the School of Medicine. I also have experience on the front line as a police officer, and I retired as a master peace officer for the state of Texas. And I've done EMS work along the way. So that's my background. And hopefully it gives a little credibility to what I have to say today. Let's get to the COVID-19. The novel coronavirus is an insidious killer, unlike anything I've seen in my experience. And while I'm not on the front lines anymore, I can do my part by training medical professionals in the recognition of its signs and symptoms. And I'm proud of the fact that many of the thousands of students I have taught are actively engaged in this fight today. You see just a couple of them on the screen. So the way we would typically handle an exercise in my lab, it would be typically a large group exercise. The students will watch a video that's embedded into the software. And from that video, they would identify certain signs and symptoms from the patient's primary medical history to their current conditions, and then go on and do the interview. After the interview, then they can turn to the live, excuse me, after the video, they can turn to the live patient, ask permission, listen to heart and lungs. Then she can examine the patient. And then we use SimScopes, the bionic hybrid simulator, if you had the standardized patients available. If you don't have the standardized patient available, then you can turn to the student auscultation mannequin to repeat her exam, finding, in this case, the appropriate uh, signs and symptoms for COVID-19, confirming her suspected differential diagnosis based on the symptoms presented. The student uh, then summarizes her findings and lets the patient know what to expect. We're going to see a video today, and after the video, I'll take some questions from the student or the audience. Our patient today is Ms. Grace Smithers. She's 72 years old. Her chief complaint is she's experiencing a non-productive cough, fevers, chills, and shortness of breath. She's a 72-year-old female who's been experiencing this dry cough, fevers, chills, and shortness of breath, especially on exertion. She's also had some sharp stabbing chest pain on both sides of her chest that increases with deep breaths. She noticed a gradual onset a few days after she thought she was getting over a cold. She's had little appetite because things just don't taste right. The patient has no significant medical history and has never had this problem before. We're gonna watch a, a short video where the student's gonna interview the patient and as she interviews the patient, she'll be making notes, noting those signs and symptoms. Hi, Ms. Smithers. My name is Avery Gallagher. I'm a medical student. What brings you in today? I just can't get rid of this cough and fever. Can you tell me more about that? Well, I thought I was getting over a cold, and then I started coughing and running a fever. I'm sorry to hear you're not feeling well. Can you tell me how old you are? I'm 72 years young. And in the past two weeks, have you had exposure to anyone with COVID-19? No. Have you lived in or visited anywhere where COVID-19 is prevalent? No. Um, I live alone and I don't get out too much except to go to the grocery store and you have to get there pretty early if you want to get toilet paper. Do you have any of the following conditions? Chronic lung disease? No. Moderate to severe asthma? No. Smoking? Yes, I used to smoke, but I quit when it got so expensive. For how long and how much did you smoke, and when did you quit? Well, I started when I was 16, and I smoked a pack a day every day until I was 66, and I quit cold turkey. Good for you. Do you have any serious heart conditions? No. 
anything that could weaken your immune system like cancer treatments, uh, prolonged steroid use, transplant, HIV or AIDS? No. Um, any history of significant weight loss? No. Any chronic conditions like diabetes, renal failure, or liver disease? No. Are you having any shortness of breath or difficulty breathing? Well, sometimes when I'm talking, I have to stop and take a breath just to finish a sentence. <coughs> Excuse me. In the past two weeks, have you worked at or volunteered at any healthcare facilities like a hospital, clinic, or nursing home? Well, I'm retired now, but I do like to go and visit my husband, Paul, at the Shady Acres Nursing Home as often as I can. And how is he doing? Well, he's had a cold for a while, and I think it's going around. Tell me more about your cough. Are you coughing anything up? No, it's just a dry, persistent cough. Are you having any pain? Yes. Sometimes when I take a deep breath, it hurts in my chest. Can you describe that pain for me? Oh, it's sort of a sharp, stabbing pain. Does anything make the pain better? Not really. I did take some ibuprofen and that helped a little bit. Does anything make the pain worse? When I take deep breaths. <laughs> Excuse me. And does the pain radiate anywhere? No. On a scale from zero to 10, with zero being no pain and 10 being excruciating, how would you rate it? I'd have to say it's about an eight. Do you have any idea what could be going on? Well, that's why I'm here. This thing just has me drained. I don't have any appetite and no food tastes right. Is it okay if I listen to your heart and lungs? Of course. Miss Smithers, your persistent, non-productive cough, fever, lack of energy and appetite are concerning. I will need to discuss your symptoms with my attending, but for now, we will need you to put on a mask and isolate you pending further test. This will include a reagent test for COVID-19, and I'm going to suggest chest x-rays and a CT scan. Is there someone you would like us to call to be with you? Do you have any questions? There are three products that I discussed today that can be used in your program regardless of a really size or budget. You see the Bionic Hybrid Simulator if you have uh, standardized patients available. You can also use the SimScope if you have standardized patients available. And if you don't have standardized patients available, the SAM Mannequin uh, is a perfect adjunct to your examination. Because what it does, it really adds realism to your experience, whether you have SPs or do not have SPs. I just wanted to thank everybody for uh, joining us today.